In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defence to save me. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we read together Psalm 31, a psalm of David written to the chief musician. And the key point of this psalm is to warn us against giving up on God too soon. David found himself under great pressure, not having anywhere to turn, but he relies upon his God. As he says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. It is by relying on God that he will have success. We must trust in the Lord as the proverb says, and not lean on our own understanding. The plea is, deliver me in your righteousness. Bend your ear down to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a secure place of defence, a fortress of defence to save me. Paul, in the New Testament, echoed this thought. If the Lord is for us, who can be against us? Psalm 31, verse 3. You are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me, for you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. The reason he is asking the Lord to deliver him is for the honour of God, for your name's sake. Because David confesses God is his God. And so he says, lead me and guide me. He wants to be on the right path for God to be glorified. On this path, there are some traps. You walk down the path, it looks clear, but his enemies have set up the nets And when he walks along, suddenly the trap is sprung and he's caught in the net. David's plea is, Lord, rescue me from the net, for you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. Now this is a phrase that the Lord Jesus used on the cross. Into your hand I commit my spirit. As he yielded his life, as he went into death, He was looking for the Lord, his strength, to raise him from the dead. He had declared it to his apostles beforehand, but he still needed to trust God in dying that he would rise again. And that's what we must do. Though I die, yet shall I live, Job said. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. His position is based on the character of God. Verse 6, I have hated those who regard useless idols. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities. You have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. There are two approaches to life. There are those who rely upon idols things that are man-made solutions but who have no power because they are man-made. David has turned away from those who think the idols have power. He trusts in the Lord. The Lord is merciful. He rejoices in God's mercy. He rejoices in God's help. You help me in trouble. You have known my soul in adversities. There have been many troubles that David has got into, but the Lord has comforted him and encouraged him. He's not handed him over to the enemy. He's not been weak towards David. He has delivered him and set him free. And so verse 9 says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. 
I am a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbours, and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am like a broken vessel, for I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side, while they take counsel together against me. They scheme to take away my life. David is threatened yet again. Those who should be supporting him flee from him. They find him offensive because he acknowledges God. Some people are offensive because of their own actions. But those who love God become offensive to those who hate God because they represent God. They operate in the name of God. And this becomes very heavy burden for those who love God to be rejected, to be repulsed, for people to turn away from him. But that's what happened to the Lord Jesus. Even his disciples fled from him in the moment of his arrest. He was like a broken vessel, discarded. I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side. As Jesus hung on the cross, what were they saying? They were slandering him. They were mocking him. They were taking counsel together against him. They schemed to take his life. But just as Jesus trusted his father, even though all should turn away from him, even Peter would deny him, yet he was trusting in God. As for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. The concept of being ashamed is simply if you rely on something and confess something and it proves to be false, you will be ashamed. David has proudly confessed God is his God. God is alive. God will deliver him. He can pursue righteousness and all will turn out well. But to that end, he must trust God for it to happen. He can't make it all happen himself. But the wicked take matters into their own hands. Well, let them be ashamed, he says. It will be shown that their answer is no answer. But God's hand is sufficient. It is based on God's mercy, truth, and now his goodness in verse 19. How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you, in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence, from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tr- tongues. So we have God's goodness laying up an inheritance for the righteous. The New Testament speaks much of this. David in Psalm 23 spoke of it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord has prepared a place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come again and receive you unto myself. This place is a hidden place. It's not an earthly place. It is God's very presence. We cannot see it now, but God has promised it, a place where we are delivered from the present strife. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvellous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. O love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. 
Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord.